Okay. Vermeer. You want to read this? Vermeer is a lush frontier world. Ideal for... Have I mentioned I like the encyclopedia guy? They got to read the encyclopedia in this game. I think they got a great voice to do all the encyclopedia entries. Ideal for colonization by carbon-based species, its vast seas and orbital position on the inner life zone have created a wide equatorial band of humid, tropical terrain. Unfortunately, the political instability of the nearby terminus systems has impeded colonization efforts. The high risk of raids by pirates and slavers makes it an unappealing homestead. Ah, oh, surface gravity's 0 0.06 Gs? Did I read that right? Yep. Does that mean you can jump 50 feet in the air? Mm, no. You could jump maybe a little bit higher than normal, I think. I think that's the way that works. If it was 0.6 a little bit, like, I think the moon's 0.6 Gs. Mm. But I thought I read 0 0.06 Gs. I must have read that wrong, because mm. that's, like, feather. That's not feather, but that's, like, extremely, extremely low gravity. I think you probably did read it wrong. <clears throat> Man, I'm reading a signal. Must be our Solarian infiltration team. Check out those defense towers. <laughs> Drop the Mako. We're Check out those defense out. towers, man. I'll get you in underneath They're the radar. Gnarly. All right. Wow, that is that really is under the radar. I love Joker. Yeah, he's yeah, really good. He freaking buzzed the palm trees. <laughs> good job. That is deserved. <laughs> Stay out of range and continue evasive maneuvers until I bring those AA towers down. I know the drill. Meet you at the camp once those towers are offline. Joke around. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit looser with my crew now. They're all... They've all been great during this entire mission. At the very start, I was very, like, hush-hush with them, but I've, I've really warmed up to them by now. What on earth? They're crabs. Is that a... They're not robots, are they? They're crabs. Yeah. Oh, they're crabs, okay. Crab. Crab people, crab people. Taste like crab, talk like people. I'll give you some hostile contact. Boom! Really don't want these things following me. I feel like I'm supposed to be really stealthy, so I'm just taking out whatever I see. Yeah, you definitely don't want those Imperial probe droids getting all up in your space, because then you'll have ATSTs and STATs and AT AT and T and STDs. Oh yeah, those are the worst. Those are the worst. Damn it, Mako. go. Let's rock it! Okay, well, it's pretty obvious, obvious they probably know I'm here by now, so fuck it. That is really odd. I'm actually not sure how, um... I'm actually not sure how XMapper is calculating the rumble feature <laughs> for this game. I'm not sure if I programmed it or not. Because the rumble feature just kind of uh, seems to just come and go. Like, it just happens randomly. And, I am I mean, I'm pretty sure that's because I'm just using a, um, a gamepad mapper, but... Fuck. Anyway, um... Back wow, our, we've uh, got lots of hexes. Yeah, fuck this. Um, let's see about... Oh, God. That wasn't terribly effective. It was not massively effective. Let's go that way. This seems right. Ooh, shit! Oh, boy. Um... Hopefully Tally will take control of one of those probe droids and we can get a little bit more cover. Oh, uh, she did and I blew it up. I'm smart. Okay. It's a constant fear with me, by the way, of coming across as like an entitled douche. Because I don't, I definitely don't, I really don't um, mean to sound like I like I feel like I deserve more than I'm getting because uh, in my opinion I deserve exactly like what I get or less 
There are very few times that I would say you've acted anything close to entitled. Well, that's good. But you're heavily biased. But I respect I am, you. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, you know, for all the self-doubt you have about, you know, yourself, like, I have that in other ways myself. And I'll, oh, I always think that I'm doing things the wrong way. Like, uh, for instance, uh, I was visiting my family last week, and I had a day where I was just extremely stressed out. There were a lot of things that were going on um, in many aspects of my life that I, that were weighing on me. Um, and I had a very long day. Uh, there was a lot going on, uh, urgently. Like, um, uh, there were... I was seeing a few family members, and I had to take my car in for an inspection, and it was making some odd noises, and I was worried that that might lead to something worse. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, my grandmother, who is, uh, 101 and living in a nursing home, um, she is, uh, uh, I love her, but she can be a bit, um, actually, she is entitled. She feels very... She acts very entitled. She's you, a, she acts very selfish. You uh, told me about your grandmother, actually. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, she's 101, so, like, you know, who's to say she doesn't deserve at least a little special treatment? And um, she's very, you know, she's she's got most of her health. Like, the only the biggest problem with her is her knees don't work very well anymore. Um, that's kind of it. Everything else is going pretty well. But anyway, Maybe so, you should get her a pet Dalmatian. There... I don't... That she... was a really dumb joke. <laughs> um, Dalmatians don't age well. Did you know that? I had a friend who had a Dalmatian, uh, and for the last, like, three years of her life, she was extremely territorial, and you couldn't introduce her to anyone new, because she would not, absolutely not take to them. Jeez. Um, anyway, uh, so we were having this day where we'd just seen her, and she, every time you leave, every time you say goodbye to her, she acts like you're leaving her forever and you're a horrible person for leaving her alone in this nursing home. Um, I can't imagine how my parents feel every time they, they see her, but because they see her a lot more often than I do. Yeah. And they're the ones that helped put her into it, for good reason, obviously. She's 101, but, you know, um, the guilt trip is not subtle with her. <laughs> anyway, um, I was stressing out over something very, very simple, but... I did something that my dad told me was, quote, the old gym came out for a few minutes. And it hit me when he used that phrase that I actually have adjusted to be better in society over the past 20 years. Like, compared to how I was in elementary school through middle school, and, like, since the end of middle school, I've been slowly maturing as a social creature. Uh, to the point where I can function, I believe, very normally in groups. Um, but I guess I had, like, five minutes where I started stressing out a lot. And, um, I was sort of babbling and being a bit annoying, as I used to be all the time. Mm -hmm. And my parents... Uh, because they were exposed to it every day for years and years, they'll remember the way I was, but I won't remember exactly how I was unless somebody else brings it up to me. And I get perspective on it. And so, like, I had so many things going on in my brain, and my tolerance finally just couldn't take all the tiny little points of stress, and I started just fixating on one single part of it, which was getting my car back on time, uh, we didn't know what time the deal, the place closed, and it, it, it was all extremely minor stuff. Nothing to really get worked up about, but I got worked up over it anyway, just because I got, just, I ended up in this, like, closed loop of increased stress. And my dad acted like I had basically started, like, like, using a noisemaker in his ear. Like, doing something really, really, really annoying for no, for no apparent reason. Mm. And, um, it helped me realize that, uh, I do get extremely hard on myself for no, for no logical reason. I get we hung up on a small thing. 
sometimes, and it takes other people that know you better than you know yourself to hold a mirror up and say, hey dude, you can chill out. This is not a, it's not as big of a deal as you're making it. And that helps me God, build, I hope so. feel better. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking forward to a really positive thing, actually, when I go to California. One of my roommates wants to get into uh, doing Let's Plays and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was immediately like, here, I I know everything you need to do. Um, I'll teach you everything you need to know about it. And we'll go from there. Cool. I've even got a capture card I can just let you borrow if you want to try it out. And I feel like I feel like I instantly earned a friend because I was just so forthcoming because of all the crap I know about like mm -hmm. playing and stuff like that. Collaboration uh, is something I something, should do more often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's something that I'm aware of, and I'm looking for a new place to go, like a new job. Wherever I move to, I I'm want to be. In, down, Commander. On approach to the Salarian base now. I want to be in an area where there are people like me that I can collaborate with, that I can hang out on a daily basis, or at, you know, at least a weekly basis, and feel a connection to. Yeah. And we don't get that here because we're, you know, we're in nowhere. And the people we have tried to go meet, we haven't really synced up with. And I have a feeling yeah. it's just not going to happen while we're here. Sadly, while well, you're here. I'm sorry. Well... I'm moving eventually. Yeah, it's it. it, it I, I I'm kind of glad you are because we have tried to. We went to a board game club and we went to a guy's house to hang out and play board games. And the he board was game club was definitely better. Grossly unprepared for the evening. Yeah, the board claim the board game club was better, but going to the guy's house was really awkward. Actually, it was extremely awkward. It was the worst possible way. For us to be introduced to a new person and like vice versa for them to be introduced to us um, and we were personally invited I joined them on meetup and I was contacted by the guy uh, it wasn't even an official meetup it was just um, this guy being like hey if you're interested we do have like a D&D &D group and they do D&D &D every week on, uh, and so that's cool and he was like occasionally between campaigns we do board games and I'm like that's great that's why I joined this meetup I want to play board games so uh, he invited us over for that one night and it ended up just being four of us Rack and me as the new guys and then the, the guy hosting and then one of the, his regular D&D &D friends and None of us knew the game we were playing. The guy hadn't even finished punching out all the chips before we were before we arrived. And like and maybe this is something maybe this is us feeling like we're privileged or something. But I mean I'm used to going to a meetup where the host has everything set up already because they're the host. It. And they know what time it's starting, and they know to be ready or whatever. Yeah. But he hadn't even read the rule book to the to the game yet. And it's a lot of things that I take for granted, having gone to several board game clubs in my life. Things that I would take for granted as, oh, of course you do this before you start the meetup. That hadn't happened. We showed up, and it was just very awkward. I don't even think he got up out of his chair the entire time we were there, did he? Nope, he did not. He w he stayed in the same chair while the entire time we were in the house. You ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. I'm the Green Lantern! Sorry. But I wanted to do that. <laughs> Can you recite the oath? Uh, I can try to, but don't get mad at me if I can't. I won't get mad at you. Hang on. Um, I, I can't say I won't be entertained. Increases the force of rifle butts and other melee attacks. Oh, I melee a lot. I'm getting that. All right, I'm good. I was looking for so another... You, you do the butt a lot? Yeah, I do. You can take a lot of butt force? Yes. I love anal sex! <laughs> All right, anyway. Now that that's over. Um, let's see. That was uh, the final gate. In Our path to the brightest day and blackest night... No evil will stand my mic. 
Is that it? In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Damn it! Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. I was kind of on the right track. Yeah, you were. You had almost the first two lines. I, I um, I never bothered to actually remember the Green Lanterns. Well, I was, most people don't. I was more concerned with uh, remembering the Sith code actually. Because I like Sith code. Yeah, I like the Sith code over over just about anything. What's that? Uh I've kind of forgotten it. It would take me a little bit to remember it. Okay, I'll uh, I'll tell you this. The one the one chant that I was always proud to have remembered um, was uh, uh, from the Slayers anime series. Lena Inverse has an ultimate attack called the Dragon Slave. Yeah. And her chant to recite the Dragon Slave was the thing I always remembered. Uh oh. And, uh, it's, like, right up there with the Team Rocket theme. It's used in almost every episode, for the for the most part, like, for the first, like, series. And it's her trademark thing. Commander, Normandy's touched down at the base, but it looks like we're grounded. The Solarian captain can explain when you get here. Oh, God. It's just very poetic and badass. 